Well, it should surprise uh, us that God wants us to be happy. And every time that one of you stopped by last week to talk to me about this sermon series that we're in crazy happy, there were puzzled looks whenever I would talk about how God wants us all to be crazy happy. It doesn't uh, make sense to some people because we've been taught things uh, about life that aren't always happy, right? We've experienced things that aren't always happy. Uh, the surprise that we've been talking about is where you find happiness. God wants you to be crazy happy, uh, but it's not in the places that we usually look in. It's in different places. Last week, we started by talking about the Beatitudes, and we said that the blessed person uh, in Matthew chapter 5 is a happy person. Remember that when uh, Jesus started out listing all of these things, the Beatitudes, you can translate the word blessed as happy, makarios in Greek. And so I want to talk in depth. I want to unpack the Beatitudes. And let's begin with the first one that I was just talking about, Matthew 5, 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. So we ask ourselves, what exactly is Jesus saying here? We could say it a different way that might help us to understand. Happiness is found on the other side of humility. Happiness is on the other side of humility because it begins by saying, oh, how happy is the person who is poor in spirit. What is poor in spirit? We don't use uh, poor in spirit all the time in common language. Being poor in spirit doesn't mean you're lacking courage. It's acknowledging a type of, of spiritual loss, spiritual bankruptcy, uh, is what this text is saying. Being poor in spirit doesn't mean you lack courage. It means that you are humble enough to know when you need God's help. You are humble enough to say to God, hey, I need you to guide me, oh God. Nobody ever would say that happiness comes on the other side of humility, but that's exactly what Jesus is saying. The person who is humble and lives their life depending on God. Jesus is explaining to these people who were gathered there that day to hear his sermon. He's telling them, if you are humble enough, you can be a participant in the kingdom of heaven. He said something similar in Matthew chapter nine, which I want you to be able to take a look at today. Listen to this text. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and with his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, no need of a doctor. But those who are sick need a doctor, Jesus was telling them. And he said, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. I love that word. You see how Jesus speaks about, speaks about those who are sick? Those are the people who are poor in spirit that Jesus was talking about in the sermon. They know they have issues and problems, so they're humble enough to ask for help. And who's the help? Jesus is that help that they need. 
So happiness comes on the other side of humility. And then the next beatitude, uh, five, four. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You know, mourning is part of our journey. That's part of our journey in life. Suffering a loss. If you ask 100 people, how many of them would guess that the crazy, happy life involves more? Zero. I bet zero people would say that. But yet that's not what Jesus is saying in his Sermon on the Mount. It's not what he's saying at all. Mourning encompasses a lot of ground. What does it include? Grief uh, caused by our personal mistakes and losses and also other things that happen to us in our lives all cause mourning when we lose someone close to us. And what does God promise in this text that Jesus is sharing in his sermon that, you know, that God is going to be there to comfort you when you are sad and when you are mourning. That's why it says, oh, how happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So we're reminded that mourning is part of the journey of life and it's part of the crazy happy life because being sad leads to being happy. There's a wonderful text in Psalm 30 about it. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. That's the part that we've all heard. Weeping comes at night, but joy comes in the morning. I think that scripture is wonderful. Though we may weep, joy comes in the morning. God's happiness comes through our seasons of sadness. And now I want to talk about the next couple of Beatitudes. What else happens to us in our lives? This one. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So according to Jesus, meekness is not weakness, but the road to happiness. And then we've got another one. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you're anything like me, You've got all kinds of hungers in your life. All of us hunger and thirst for many things. We are all longing for happiness. We all hunger to fill our voids. But the key here is this. We should hunger, according to Jesus' sermon, for good things. We should thirst for the right things. And the right thing is to hunger and thirst for for things that are of God, for God's righteousness. And that reminds us of Psalm 42. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? The psalmist here is talking about the truest longings of his soul. I have no doubt that Jesus had this text in mind when he was putting together his sermon, when he was speaking that day. Just think about it. On an average day, a deer will walk through the forest. How far? Two miles, three miles. They're going to get hungry. They are going to get thirsty. And as a deer thirsts for water, the psalmist says, so our soul longs for God. My soul is thirsty for you, O oh God. And really, we are reminded the deepest longings of our humanity are for, should be and are for God. 
You know, as we end this message today and we're talking about God's plan for our crazy, happy lives, it's amazing to look over uh, what we've talked about the last couple of weeks. God's crazy, happy plan for your life is a big part of your human existence. There are things like being humble before God and asking God to guide you and give you help. You're going to experience sadness and mourning. Uh, and it, the crazy happy life involves meekness, which I think means having strength under control. Uh, and when we hunger and thirst, we have to thirst and hunger for God. We're looking for the crazy, happy life. And if we allow our deepest hungers and longings to be hungers and longings for God, God promises, as Jesus points out in his sermon, a very crazy, happy life. And when that happens, God's crazy, happy plan for your life is going to unfold. I'm really excited as we continue talking about these Beatitudes for next week when we talk about more of God's crazy, happy plan for your life. And I pray that you find that in the deepest way possible. Amen.